there are so much going on within your body system. Digestion is also occurring. There is transportation of food substances. There is transportation of oxygen. So many things, cells are dividing. There are so many things occurring inside of you. And we call this metabolic activity. In fact, the term metabolism can simply be defined as the sum total of all the activities that goes on within the body. And when I'm talking about within the body, within the body, within the cells, within the tissues, within even organs and even the systems, there are several activities going on. And just like we have also said, for every activity, for every activity, both internal or external, every activity waste is always generated. So in this topic of excretion, we are going to be considering how these wastes are being removed from within the body. Now, if you look at in our normal daily life in school, if wastes are generated, you see that people come to sweep off those wastes, liters of pieces of papers and so many other things, biscuit wraps and so many other things are generated, wastes are generated in schools. They are always packed swept off, or uh, the floor is being mopped, the glasses are being mopped, and so many other things, cleaning taking place, sanitation taking place to remove these deaths or waste. Also in your body, there are processes that are involved to remove these waste and these deaths. But my question still remains, if these waste are left unattended to, not removed from your body, what then becomes the situation of your body? Now, in this topic, we're going to be looking at a lot of things. We're going to be talking about um, some objective. Number one, I'm going to explain to you, I'm going to define, or you should be able, at the end of this class, to define and mention the purpose of for excretion. You're going to define excretion. You're also going to tell the purpose for excretion. And number two, you're also, by the end of this class, you should be able to tell the importance of excretion. Now, this importance of excretion poses, in fact, gives answer to the question I just asked. It gives a lot of answer to the question I just asked. If these wastes are kept in our body, what then happens to our body? And number three is we're going to mention some organisms and their waste products their waste products and also their, sorry, their waste product, of course, as well as their excretory organs. And then also we're going to be looking at the mechanism of excretion, how does some of these organisms carry out excretion, organisms like earthworm, organisms like the flatworm, as well as the insects, how do they carry out excretion? And these are the things, few things we are going to be looking at in this topic, excretory system one. Now, if you're set, I would like us to consider and start, um, I would like us to begin with the definition of excretion. What is excretion? Now, excretion is simply the removal of metabolic waste product, or you can say it is the removal of waste products of metabolism from the bodies of living organisms. Or you can say it is the process by which um, the, the living organisms remove waste product of metabolism from the body. Now, there is this also another important thing I want to ask. Feces. The removal of feces, the removal of feces, that's um, ejection, is it the same thing as excretion? So when I go to the toilet and I pass out feces, is it referred to as excretion? And then when I go to the toilet and pass out urine, is it also the same thing as excretion? Now, please note this. Excretion is not the same thing as ejection. Passing out feces is called ejection. Passing out urine is called excretion. Now, one major difference between the two of them is that they are not spelled the same way. Uh, excretion is not spelled the same way with ejection. But however, excretion, like we said before, has to do with removal of excretory waste products. 
But ejection is the removal of undigested food. It is not a waste. It is just that the body have digested the ones it wants to make use of. The ones that are not digested are removed from the body. Not that it is a waste. Not that the body doesn't, it is going to be toxic to the body. No, it is not toxic. It is coming from the same source. It is not toxic. It's just that the body has taken the particular amount of, of, of digested food it wants and the remaining are just like excesses. So in other words, these excesses are then removed from the body through the process we call ejection. But in terms of excretion, it has to do with removing waste products that are being generated as the body is undergoing metabolic processes. That is, the body is carrying out activities. There are several toxic wastes that are being produced. So excretion is not the same thing as ejection. So when you go to the toilet and pass out urine, you are actually excreting a product. You are carrying out excretion. But when you go to the same toilet and then you pass out feces, you are not carrying out excretion. What you are actually doing is ejection. I hope I make myself clear. I hope that is clear. You are passing out, you're carrying out ejection. Now, what is the major purpose of excretion? It's simple. The major purpose of excretion is to remove waste, product of metabolism. It is to remove waste, product of metabolism. That is the key and major um, um, reason or purpose for excretion, to remove metabolic waste from the body. So that is the major purpose for excretion. Now, if you could remember when we started, I, I, I introduced this topic by asking an, a question, an important question. And I said, what happens if these wastes are kept inside of the body? What will you think will happen to us? Now, the, in, that brings us to the importance of excretion. There is a very important reason why excretion is in place or why the body needs to undergo excretion. Now, please also note this. Excretion doesn't only occur in animals. It also occurs in plants. Why? Plants also carry out metabolic activities. There are several processes that occur in plants that waste are always generated afterwards. And these waste must be removed, must be removed. Now, one of the reasons or the importance of excretion or the reasons why we remove waste, number one, is that it helps to maintain water balance in the body. It helps to maintain water balance in the body. Now, there are several activities that goes on within our body system. Now, your cells are always in a watery environment. Now, we have what we call the internal environment of a cell, the internal environment. The internal environment includes tissue fluids, includes which is the blood, as well as the lymph. Now, cells are always found in tissue fluids, both the unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms, they are found in watery environment. Now, if the content of the cell is hypotonic, if the content of the cell is hypotonic, that is, there is no much, the, the, the content is not so much. Or let's say, if the content of the cell is hypertonic, that means the concentration of salt or the concentration of solutes inside of the cell is high. And then the concentration of the tissue fluid, which is, for instance, the blood, is hypotonic. It means it contains more of water. It is diluted. It poses a lot of threat if there is no balance. In fact, it interferes with the smooth or efficient working of the body. Now, how? what will actually happen? Now, once this thing happens, osmosis sets in. 
Now, what is osmosis? Movement of water molecules from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration. So if the content of the cell is hypertonic and then the tissue fluid, which is the blood, is hypotonic, it simply means that water will begin to leave the blood and enter into the cells. As water continuously enters the cells, the cell will begin to swell, will begin to swell. And if not controlled, if not checked, if not stopped, the cells will continue swelling and then it will burst or lies. We call that plasmolysis. So it can lead to the lysing of the cells. Now imagine if all the cells in the living, in the living organisms start lysing because of an irregularity in water balance. Of course, you know it's going to pose a major threat to your existence or a major threat to the existence of that particular organisms. Of course, you know this. One of the cell theory is that there is no life apart from the life of a cell. In fact, what is the basic unit of life, as the definition implies, is cells. The same thing, number two, it helps to maintain salt balance. There are some organs that are responsible for maintaining water balance in humans in mammals and also maintaining salt balance in mammals. The same thing based on you taking too much of salt or taking in too much of um, food and particles and all that and probably the solute or the, 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 the concentration of the solute in the blood is now high making it hypertonic and then the content of the cell is hypotonic what do you think will happen again cell water will, molecules will begin to leave the cells be going into the tissue fluid which is the blood now uh, this will make the, the cells to begin to shrink it will begin to shrink if it continues the cells will shrink and then it will wilt and die that is what we call plasmolysis. The other one was called hemolysis. So it will now shrink and die. So in other ways you're looking at it, if the salt and water concentration of the internal environment is not put in check, if it is not maintained in a balance, it poses a big threat. It poses a big threat to the existence of that particular living organism. Hence, the existence or hence the working functions of certain organs. Some organs are there to ensure that there is a maintenance of a water balance as well as salt balance. In fact, the maintenance of water and salt balance is what we call osmoregulation in biology. And osmoregulation is also a form of excretion. It also has to do with what? Excretion. So one other importance, again, I repeat, the importance of excretion is to help maintain water balance and also help to maintain what? Salt balance. Now, another important um, um, importance of excretion is that waste product, if they are not removed, like I said before, can interfere with the normal metabolic activities of the body. The body won't carry out effective um, um, activities. You check it. The same thing can also happen in our normal day life. If you are in school and um, uh, the waste generated in school have not been removed for over, let's say, two weeks, can you stay in that environment to learn? Will you be comfortable in that particular environment to learn? The same thing also can be applicable in the kitchen. If all you have been cooking for a month is still there in the kitchen and has not been removed. Will you be comfortable staying there? It will definitely interfere with your normal activities for that day. In the same manner, waste product, if not removed from the body, can interfere with the normal metabolic activities of the body. Number four, excretory waste products are harmful. These waste products are very harmful. They are toxic. So if they are left inside of the body, they become poisonous to the body. They are toxic. Excretory waste are not friendly waste. They are not harmless waste. They are toxic or poisonous waste substance. Hence, they must be removed from the body of a living organism. Now, let's take a look at 
some um, organisms and their excretory organ as well as their excretory waste products. We have a lot of organisms. We're going to look at their excretory from unicellular organisms to simple multicellular organisms to complex multicellular organisms as well as plants. We're going to be looking at their excretory organs and also be looking at their excretory products. Number one on the list is a protozoa. Protozoa. Now, the excretory protozoa includes things like um, the amoeba. We have the amoeba. We have um, the paramecium. We have the euglena. We have chlamydomonas. They are all examples of protozoa. And please note this, that all protozoa are unicellular organisms. They are unicellular as well as microscopic. So you can see them except with the aid of a microscope. Now, excretory organ of most protozoa is the contractile vacuole. It is an organelle found inside of the cells. As you can see also on the screen, you'll see it, contractile vacuoles. Now, the excretory products of protozoa includes, we have carbon dioxide, we have ammonia gas, ammonia, which is also a gas, and then also we have water, excess water. Now, excess water can also pose a threat to most organisms if they are much. I just explained to you about the water balance. So, it is very important. Osmo regulation, excess water can, can, can be removed through osmo regulation. We're going to talk more about it. We're going to look at their mechanism of operation. And then also the other one, we also have flatworms. Flatworms. Now, what are flatworms? Flatworms are, there are different types of flatworms. We have um, the planaria, we have the tapeworm. They belong to the phylum called platyhelminths, okay? And um, the excretory organs of flatworms are called flame cells. They are called flame cells. Now, their excretory products include carbon dioxide, we have ammonia, and as well as water. So these are the excretory products. Number three, we have what we call the annelids. Now, annelids, an example of an annelid is tapeworm. Sorry, it's um, earthworm. Earthworm, the excretory organ of the earthworm is called nephridia. Singular form is called nephridium. So the nephridia, the excretory products of the annelids include water, excess water. We have urea. We have carbon dioxide. We have and nitrogenous waste. I repeat, water, urea, carbon dioxide, and nitrogenous waste. And then also we have number four on the list, which is insects. Now, all insects, their excretory organ is the, called the malfigian tubules, malfigian tubules. Now, their excretory products include water, carbon dioxide, and uric acid, and uric acid. And then number five, number five, we have the crustaceans. Now, crustaceans also belong to the um, phylum Atropoda, as well as the insects that belongs to the phylum Atropoda. Now, the crustaceans include things like the shrimp, we have the, um, the prawn, we have um, the um, crabs, they fall under crustaceans. Now, their excretory organ is called green gland, green gland. Their excretory products include water, urea, carbon dioxide, and ammonia salt, or ammonium salt. So these are their excretory products. Number six on the line, we have Pisces, which is the fish. The excretory organ of the fish is called the kidney as well as the gills. So kid, um, they excrete waste through kidney, their kidneys, and also through their gills. The gills excretes carbon dioxide, which is an excretory product. We also have urea, we have salt, we have water, we have uric acid. Salt, water, uric acid, and um, urea, they can be excreted through the kidney, but carbon dioxide can be excreted through the gills. And then number six, or number seven rather, we have amphibians. This is more the more complex um, multicellular organisms. We have amphibians. Now the excretory um, organ of amphibian is the kidney. 
their excretory products include urea, salt, water, uric acid. Urea, salt, water, and uric acid. And then also we have reptiles. Reptiles include um, the, um, the lizards, we have the snakes, we have the crocodiles, we have the wall gecko, and so on. These are all examples of um, reptiles. Now, the excretory organ of reptiles is the kidney. The kidney. The excretory products include urea, it includes salt, water, and uric acid. Urea, salt, water, and uric acid. We also have number nine on the list, which is birds. Now, birds, their excretory organ is the kidney and the lungs. The kidney and the lungs. Their excretory products include urea, we have salt, we have water, we have uric acid, and then we have carbon dioxide. Now, urea, salt, water, uric acid can be removed through the kidney, but carbon dioxide can be removed through the lungs. Okay? And then, um, number 10 on the list is mammals. Mammals, they have um, not just one excretory organ. Mammals have several excretory organs, and we're going to be looking at each of these excretory organs and their excretory products. Now, number one on the line, which is the major excretory organ of mammals, mostly in man, is the kidney. Now, the kidney excretes waste like urea, salt, water, mostly urea, salt, water, and uric acid. Now, these can be called urine. So urine is actually made up of urea, salt, water, and in some cases, uric acid. And then also we have another one, which is the skin. The skin is also another excretory organ. The skin excretes sweat. The skin excretes sweat. And sweat is actually made up of urea, salt, and water. Urea, salt, and water water. Another excretory organ in mammals is the liver. The liver. The liver excretes what we call bile salt. Now bile salt plays a major role in digestion of fats. We call that process emulsification of fats. Also another um, product, excretory product that is being excreted by the liver is water as well as urea. And then also we have the lungs, which we have just discussed on respiratory system. The lungs excrete carbon dioxide and water vapor. So these are the excretory organs in mammals as well as their excretory products. Finally, we have um, excretory, um, the excretory um, system of flowering plants. Now, plants remove. Their excretory organ is the stomata and the lenticel. Please note, plants do not have specific organ for um, excretion. So they use stomata and lenticel. The excretory products include tannins. We have mucilage. We have gum alkaloids. We have resins. We have oils and also latex. So these are some of the excretory waste of flowering plants. Now, next important thing to look at are mechanisms of sorry, excretion in some of these organisms. I'm not going to be discussing all of them, but we're going to pick very few of them. We're going to pick um, unicellular organism. We're going to pick a simple multicellular organism. We're also going to pick a complex multicellular organism, and then we're going to pick also a plant. So probably four. Now, take a look at this. Mechanism of excretion in amoeba, very, very important. You are still going to miss this particular um, this thing on the topic regulation of internal environment. Now, we're using amoeba as a, the example to explain mechanism of excretion in protozoa. In protozoa. Remember, we said that the excretory organ in protozoa is called the contractile vacuoles. So, in other words, amoeba uses the contractile vacuoles to get rid of excess water in its cell. 
mostly excess water. Now, how does this happen? Now, amoeba lives in fresh water, which is hypotonic. Remember, we've talked about this. Hypotonic. So, in fresh water, which is hypotonic to the content of each cell. It simply means that in the content, the content of the amoeba is hypertonic, while the environment, which is the fresh water, is hypotonic. Now, what happens is that water constantly enters into the cell due to osmosis. We said that osmosis is the movement of water molecules from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. So it means that if the cell is hypertonic and the cell environment is hypotonic, water molecules will move from the cell environment which is hypotonic and will start entering into the cell which is hypertonic. Now, however, to regulate the amount of water or excess water that enters into the cell, these excess water, instead of just entering into the cell, enter into the contractile vacuoles. So they are also collected into the contractile vacuoles. As water is entering into the cell by osmosis, excess of those water also enter into the contractile vacuoles. Now, the contractile vacuoles, as water is entering into it, begins to expand as it is filled with water. And from time to time, from time to time, the, the, the contractor vacuoles move to the uh, cell membrane and empties its content from time to time to the exterior. It empties its content from, the, from time to time. So it, it is something that happens every time of its life. So after emptying that content, uh, which is excess water, it goes back and collects in more excess water and then empties it, it collects, empties it, it collects and then empties. So that is a continuous process that takes place in order to maintain water balance within the cell. So in other words, I can also say that amoeba undergo osmoregulation using what? The contractile vacuoles. Now, excretory products of amoeba, we have said it, it includes ammonia, carbon dioxide, and they are always removed through the process of diffusion. So we're going to be looking at platyhelminths. Now, platyhelminths are actually flatworms. They are flatworms. So, and then these flatworms, we have different types of flatworms. We have the ones that are free living, they are not parasitic, and that is planaria. We also have the parasitic platforms, which includes um, the tapeworm. Tapeworm is also a, pa is a parasitic platform. Now, the organ of excretion is um, the flame cell. <clears throat> now, this is how the flame cell actually works. Now, in flame cell, the nucleus is placed to one side of the cell, and the cytoplasm has a large hollow, which is called the cell lumen. Now, the lumen continues to a fine, if you look at the structure, it continues to a fine tubule, and then you see a bunch of flagella, okay, hanging down the lumen. Now, what happens is this, during excretion, the waste products diffuse into the uh, flame cell. Now, once they get into the flame cell, with the aid of the flagella, these wastes are carried into the tubules. You will see the structure that refers to the tubules and from where they are passed out of the body uh, into the exterior, okay? So the flame cell, the flame, well, as the waste enters the flame cell by diffusion, the flagella helps to guide it through the tubules and then they are removed out of the body of the flatworm, okay? So this is how um, excretion or the mechanism of excretion in um, flatworm occur. Next is mechanism of excretion in earthworm. Now, earthworm is an annelid. Annelids are also called segmented worm. <clears throat> Their excretory organ of an annelid is um, nephridia. That's the excretory organ, nephridia. Now, this is how the nephridia works. During excretion, excretory waste, especially urea, is removed from the blood into the nephridia. Now, fluids, there are fluids that contain this waste. 
And as they, they move, as they are, they are moving from the blood, they enter into the nephridia. They pass through the long tubes of the nephridia. As long the way as they go through the long tubes of the nephridia, salt and other useful substances are now removed through the walls of the tubes. They are removed through the walls of the tubes. And this is how um, uh, uh, um, the, the um, earthworm carries out excretion. As they are removed along the walls of the tubes, unabsorbed substances are collected in the muscles, muscular tube, as urine, and they are passed out to the exterior through excretory pores. Now, carbon dioxide in earthworm is removed from the body through moist body surface by gaseous exchange. So this is how um, 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 earthworms, which are segmented worms, carry out excretory processes. And then the next one is mechanism of excretion in insects. Now, insects, we have different types of insects. Remember, we said that insects, they fall under the phylum Atropoda. Now, the excretory organ of insects are malfi or is the malfigian tubules. Now, nitrogenous waste products and water, which are liberated into what we call homeocells. Now, homeocells are actually empty spaces through which the blood have direct contact with the cells. So nitrogenous waste products and water are liberated or released into these homeocells. Okay, liberated into, uh, they are absorbed. And after they are liberated into the homeocells, they are then absorbed into the end of the malfigian tubules. There's what we call the distal end of the malfigian tubules. There at the distal end of the malfigian tubules, Nitrogenous waste are then converted into uric acid as they pass through the malfigian tubules. And as they go towards the gut, water is also reabsorbed from that waste. Now, this turns the uric acid into what we call solid crystals. Now, thus, when this happens, urine with feces are removed from the body and they are very concentrated and almost dry solid. So this is also how um, the insects get rid of metabolic waste from their own body. Now, in conclusion to all of this, I want you to understand that all living organisms remove waste of, or waste product of metabolism from their body. And I said it is essential, it is very essential and important for effective functioning of the body cells and tissues. This is where we call it a wrap-up in this particular topic, excretory system one. But before we go, I want us to take a look at some few past questions in using the exam guide app. All right, quickly, let's look at some few questions using the exam guide app. We have um, this biology. Um, just we have about eight questions and we're going to just pick very few of them. Number one, it says there, which organ removes the largest quantity of water from the blood? Removes the largest quantity of water from the blood. We're going to be looking at that in our next topic, which is excretory system two. But that is the answer is what? The kidney. The kidney. Let's look at question two. Now, question two, we have talked about it. Which of the following is a waste product of an insect? Waste product of an insect. It is not sweat. Insects don't sweat. It is not mucilage or alkaloids. We said these are excretory products of plants. But the correct answer is uric acid. Uric acid. Question three says... Okay, that's question. Okay, question three says, Malfigian tubules is the excretory organ for the which of the following organisms? Malfigian tubules. We have mentioned this, and we said it is the excretory organ for what? Insects. The excretory organs for insects. Look at question four. The organ that is responsible for excretion in, in insects is still the same question as in question three, but a little bit twisted. And then the correct answer is still what? Malfigian tubules. And then finally, question five. Okay, let's look at question six, which is the final question. 
All right, question seven. Okay, question seven. The waste product of plants used in the conversion of hide to leather. We're going to be talking about that much later. Converting of hide to leather. We're going to be looking at it when we talk about excretory products or system in plants. This is how far we're going to go for this particular topic. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using your exam guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can also learn particular topics of interest with different modes like study mode, uh, mock mode, and even practice mode. It, is also, it also has other features that makes learning very fun. Now, it is a must for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels, hit the notifica notification bell, and share the videos to your loved ones and friends that will benefit from it. Bye for now.